This is Golden Years, a roadmap to navigate retirement with Mark Cordner, the podcast. Recently, the TV comedy Curb Your Enthusiasm paid tribute to the late comedian Richard Lewis. He recently passed away at the age of 76. And ironically, here's a scene from the show with his real-life best friend, Larry David. No one on the planet would believe that you're How happy. How is this possible? Well, I have better news for you. I'm leaving you in my will. I'm tweaking it, and you're in it. No, no, no. Don't, don't do that. It's done. You're in. I don't want to be in it. I have money. I don't need it. Give it to someone who needs it. When I die, I want you to know how much I care about you. I'm not going to keep it. I'm going to give it to charity. You're my best friend. You're getting it. No, I'm making a sherman statement about the will right now. I'm sick of your historical references. If nominated, I will not run. If be I will not accept. Well, I'm bequeathing. Well, I'm not accepting. Well, you'll have to accept. Don't give it to me. Don't hurt my feelings. I'm not going to keep a penny of it. You're hurting me. Thank you, but I don't want it. I'm giving it to you anyway, pal. Oh, my God. <laughs> that is such a great sound clip. <laughs> it is. That is what, so what a wonderful friendship and what incredible what talents, friendship. too. These oh, two. my gosh. Oh no my. kidding. I can only imagine there's probably a lot of real conversations that happen like that. Don't put me in the will. I don't want your money. Leave it to the kids. Don't leave it to them. I mean, it's a it's a whole conversation for everybody is different. And, and, you know, people may think that they're done with their estate planning by drawing up a will. But, Mark, the truth is these are two separate things, a will and an estate plan, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it's so wonderful that they, we joke about it, but they were actually talking about it before the fact. I mean, I'm a big, big proponent of having family meetings and talking about these things because the worst thing in the world is to have family inherit our situation when we're still alive. You know, right after the stroke, we can't communicate our preferences. We've got to have these conversations. And prior to that, we've got to have things in writing. And so an estate plan is, in my mind, I mean, I'm, I'm not an estate planning attorney. I work closely with many, but definitely you've got to have an estate plan in place. And it's more than just the will. The will is kind of like the note to the babysitter that says, here's what I want to have happen after I'm done. But the trust most people need to have a trust, too, and, and all the legal instruments that typically go with that, like the health powers of attorney, because the trust allows us to put strings on the money. For example, I have a friend who said that my daughters are pregnant before marriage, my sons have earrings, they don't get money kind of thing. And I thought, holy cow, that's, that's, that's kind of tough, that's restrictive. And his response was, well, my money, my rules. Well, I'm not saying right or wrong, but I am saying that the trust allows us to put strings on things. And so I have, a, for example, a child who has special needs, and if he were to receive money outright, either from me or from extended family, it would actually disinherit him from medical benefits that he needs through the government when I'm long dead and gone. And so there's things like this that have to be discussed as a family. So an estate plan includes not only the financial issues, but the non-financial, which in my opinion are the more important issues. There needs to be, you know, there's a new trend for ethical wills, for example. There needs to be discussion of these kind of things. This is something we're helping our clients with. We have these personal financial organizers, and we have all these questionnaires and things to help them start these conversations with their family, doing a video message to the client's children, for example. We help them with these things. And so we want to have clarity before that time comes. We definitely, definitely want to have those health powers and powers of attorney in play so that people can make decisions in our absence, so they know what our preferences were. Boy, I can think of a ton of stories like this. Yeah, you know, interesting here you talk about you love the family meetings. I do think it's something that certainly needs to be talked about. And then also, guys, by the way, have a conversation with somebody or some of the family members of where your important paperwork is. I went through this with my grandmother. Nobody knew where anything was. Some of the paperwork was in this drawer. Some of it was over here. Then some of it was outdated. Some of it was all over the place. I mean, it was it was chaotic just trying to make sure we had everything in place there. And, you know, you mentioned three words here, a will, an estate plan, and a trust. Now, I think it's common sense. A lot of us know will, right? What do we want to, mm-hmm. what are our wishes to be, that kind of thing. Um, and then you start hearing words like estate and trust. And nine times out of 10, you really hear that when you're talking about celebrities or the richy rich people out there. But the truth of the matter is you can be an average Joe and you still need an estate plan and a trust. I mean, essentially, if you have income, you have money, you have wishes where you want it to go. Th- these are the documents that you need. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Again, the trust allows you to put some strings on the money. It, it allows you to define your preferences. Uh, certainly from a charitable standpoint, you can do some unique things there. But I would say that the estate plan goes beyond that. The estate plan addresses those not only the health care issues, but the personal uh, preferences that you, that you want with your family members. Uh, again, there's values and things that have nothing to do with money that we, we want to be able to perpetuate. One of the most fun things I enjoy is connecting my clients with attorneys who can help them establish trusts that will perpetually fund family reunions. 
And so that money is coming out each year, but only on condition that the family gathers and that the family gathers and in the course of that gathering do certain unique things like, for example, each year there's X amount that's allocated for a charity. And so all the kids and the grandkids get input on where that money goes. And so when we speak of values, for example, we're speaking about perpetuating the non-monetary things. Certainly we're using money to do it, but Mm -hmm. there are certain charities, for example, that may be specifically important to certain clients. And I certainly know in my family there's there's some charities or some organizations that we feel very, very strongly about. So, yeah, th- these are the kind of things that go into the estate plan. It's not just the legal work. Everyone's scared of getting their legal work done. But the truth, I find, is that most attorneys are going to charge you $1,500 to $2,500 to set up mm-hmm. a living trust. And in the scheme of a retirement plan, that's chump change, quite honestly. I mean, yeah. it, it stings. I don't like writing those checks any more than the next person. But I remember the first time we did a trust was, I don't know, 25 years or so ago with my wife and I. And she was kind of kicking and screaming on this because she didn't want to really deal with it. And I just kept saying, we got to do it, we got to do it. And it was interesting as we walked out the attorney's door after signing the trust, activating it, she turned to me and she said, I feel so much relief. You're like, yes, honey, that's what I've been telling you. <laughs> well, you know, I don't want to say I, <laughs> I told you I won't say so, I told but, you so, honey, but... Uh, you know. No, but you know. we had that, that same sense of relief and that same mm-hmm. sense of joy that, you know, if something happens to us, things the are, kids taken are care be of. taken care of. They're, yeah. You know, the money's in place. People know where things are at. Yeah. But it's got to be updated. Oh, my heavens, it's got to be updated regularly because life changes. and Life does change, and that's something that it should kind of be on the almost like the New Year's checklist or maybe, you know, we're headed into spring. Maybe it's time to spring clean your finances and your paperwork, and you say, okay, let me update my beneficiaries. Let me update. Maybe you have some things that are in your life that are changing, and, and, and you want to make some tweaks to how you want your personal care to be possibly down the road. I mean, these are all little things that you can update, guys. Uh, not hard to do at all. If anything, seriously, you can update or make some notes at least while you're sitting on the couch at night or watching Netflix. And uh, something I want to bring up here, because listen, we are very much a DIY society. You can go to the Google, as they say, and pretty much find out anything. What's your comments to those that say, well, I'll just go to Google and put together my will and my, my estate plan and my trust. Google knows everything. I'll just fill in the blanks. Ouch. Please, please, please don't do that is my <laughs> response. Because again, we don't know what we don't know. And it really boils down to not the cost of setting it up, but what are the what are the cost or the implications of in, incorrect choices? A good professional will always more than pay for their services through the savings that they create for you. And so I always work with a certified public accountant. You know, he, he knows things I don't know. And the same thing with the attorneys. I, I don't want to leave certain things to chance. You know, there's a, there was an, a tremendous resource. Uh, Tim Probst, I believe is his name, wrote a book called The Other Talk. It was endorsed by AARP. It's one of the many books that we give out to our clients. There's about 10 books we share, but this one is called The Other Talk. And what he's referring to is that when our children are young, we they deserve to have a certain conversation with their parents about the birds and the bees. You know, there's things that they should learn in a proper setting and not on the street. Well, there's a second talk that our children also deserve to have with us, and that's an end-of-life talk. And that is, you know, what are my preferences regarding after the stroke when I can't communicate who I want to care for me, for example? People think I'm joking when I say I don't want a female nurse. Well, I'm not joking about that because when that day comes when I I don't want my daughter doing certain things for me and my sons Mm -hmm. would prefer not doing it, well... Then let's let some poor guy get paid well for those services, but I don't want yeah. a woman in there with me that's not my watch. Investment advisory services offered through Golden Years Financial LLC, a registered investment advisory firm. Insurance is offered through Golden Years Insurance Services. These firms do not provide legal or tax advice. Consult your own legal and tax advisors before taking actions that may have tax implications. Investing in securities involves risk, including the potential loss of principal. Insurance contracts principal protection is based on the claim paying ability of the respective insurer. None of the information contained on this website shall constitute an offer to sell or solicit to buy a security or insurance product. The information and opinions contained on this site or requested from this site are provided by third parties believed to be reliable, but accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. They are provided for informational purposes only and are not a solicitation to buy or sell any of the products mentioned. Any media logos and or trademarks contained herein are the property of their respective owners and no endorsement by those owners of Mark Cordner, Golden Years Financial, or Golden Years Insurance is stated or implied.